morning. Mm -hmm. uh, happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Mm -hmm. We are here at the Krishnet Council on Aging. We are um, in the room that is not the library room. It's just a very nice meeting room. And we are having our monthly board meeting. Today is February 14th. It is 10 o'clock. Um, this meeting is being video and audio uh, recorded and uh, can be seen on local channel 18. Um, of course, if you're already watching this, you know that. But we, we say this anyways to spread the word to other people. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order at ten, this 10 o'clock. I would like a motion and a second. Motion. Colleen, a second. second. Yeah, okay. We did not have any mail, um, but we do have some minutes that Dan provided us with. And uh, his name is at the bottom of them, so he cannot deny this. <coughs> um, um, basically, um, so that you don't, I gave them to you a little bit late. Uh, just to let you know, we talked about the new vehicle that will be coming up, that we'll be getting in March. Um, the grant, our grant was cut from 80000 to 40000 That's not good. But it's going to be used for roof repair and restroom updates. Um, and we were interviewing candidates for the position of director this week, and you are very lucky. Today you're going to meet our new director, um, which is wonderful, by the way. We said a fond farewell to Heather Chu, who was very dedicated and did a great job. And um, we gave an overview of the programs and services still given here at the ACOA. Um, so may I have a motion to accept the minutes? Motion to accept. Deb, okay. And uh, second. Okay. Okay. Under new business, um, we're going to have the board members introduce themselves to Lauren, and then Lauren will introduce herself to us, and by doing this, people in the Kushnet will know who we are, a little bit about us, and uh, we'll know who Lauren is, and come in to see her if she wants them to. <laughs> and she'll talk to you about that. All right, Colleen, can I start with you? Okay, I'm Colleen Texera. Um, I'm a board member of the Council on Aging. Uh, I'm also uh, a chairman of the uh, Christian Historical Commission. I'm going to remember it all. Uh, president of the Christian Historical Society and also a member of uh, cultural council. I think that's all. Yeah, and no, <laughs> it's not all. Remember how you were Lady of the Year for a couple of years oh. in a row? <laughs> Pauline, Pauline does so much for the town of Akushnet and um, is underappreciated, and I want you to know mm. that I appreciate you, and so do the other members Thank of you. the Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, and we've got other items that we're working on this year also. Um, looking to upgrade the fence at the museum. Oh, nice. Last year we got CPC money to do one side. This year I'm going to do the other side. So that'll be complete. So I'm working on a couple of items. Um, so thank you, Paul. Keep me busy all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry? I'm Jerry Holland. Officially it's Joan, but we don't really deal with that. <laughs> um, my background is education. I taught in Taunton. And I'm now a board member here, a friend, and a trustee at the library. Good. Very good. Dan the man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I'm Dan Smith. I'm a retired uh, social worker and uh, school teacher. Um, and I'm also a member of the board uh, Council on Aging. Uh, I'm a musician. I play exclusively, exclusively right now at the VFW in Akushnet. Akushnet. I was born in Akushnet. And mm. my aim is to Thank live here until I'm gone. <laughs> And I'm second in command at my house. <laughs> <laughs> there is my wife. <laughs> yes. Yes. Do you Come want me? <laughs> Do you want to talk? Since this is your husband, would you like to talk next? Sure. sure. I am Debbie. Um, <laughs> wife of Dan. I'm um, a grandmother. I'm a writer. I've published two books of poetry. We're working on my third. And I'm thrilled to be part of this board. Good people and good cause. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And my name is Linda Gilbo. Um, 
I taught him in the cushionette for many years, as you know, I taught your mother, <laughs> and then later on, you. Um, unfortunately, I don't remember Lawman because by that time I had, had taught thousands of children, and, you know, but I do know her. I did know her. Um, let's see. I'm on, I'm with Pauline on the Cushnet Historical Society board. I'm on the uh, board for the Cultural Council. And I'm here. I used to work here. Um, I started out volunteering after I um, left my position teaching. I taught in the Christian for many years. And after I left that, I started volunteering here. And then Heather hired me just nine, 12 hours a week. But that was very nice. And I got to know people. And I got to know the program and the council. And it's a wonderful place. And I think you're going to enjoy it here. I already have. Uh, <laughs> And now it's your turn. Let me introduce you. Oh, okay. uh, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen of the board, this is Lauren Golda, and she is our new director here at the Christian Council on Aging, and she's going to tell you all about herself. <laughs> <laughs> so I am a former Christian resident. Um, we moved to a Christian when I was in third grade, so um, a lot of my childhood was spent here. Um, I went to Old Colony where I obtained my CNA license. I was in the health careers um, shop, and at that time, I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do, mm. and you know, your high school student, I wasn't sure exactly where I wanted my career to take me, but I thought that was a good step. Um, at the time, I thought I wanted to be a nurse, mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of a good bridge for me. Mm -hmm. I did um, go to Bridgewater State University, where I, I obtained my um, bachelor's degree in psychology. Um, upon graduating, I received, or I, you know, started working with Coastline as a case manager. Um, I did that for about three years. I learned a lot in that position. I didn't even know what we what our community had to offer for our seniors. Mm -hmm. So I grew a lot in that position. Um, I also decided that I wanted to go back to school and obtain my master's degree in healthcare administration. So I believe I was at Coastline for about um, two and a half years when I decided to go back to school. Um, when I was getting ready to graduate, I was ready to take on a management position and kind of see what else was out there. Um, I did end up getting the supervisor uh, position at Compass Medical in Taunton. I was there for two years where I oversaw the whole office um, along with my practice manager. Um, it was a very busy primary care office. We had 38 employees, nine providers. We had a full lab, um, medical records, um, you name it. We had a call center and I was kind of a jack of all trades there. And again, I, I definitely grew a lot um, individually and professionally as well. And unfortunately in June of this past year, they um, unexpectedly closed. Um, so that kind of left me to decide where I wanted my career to take me next. Um, I did work with Lifestream. I was there um, for a short amount of time, but I was the uh, residential coordinator at one of their um, residential um, placements where we cared for two individuals with acquired brain injuries. And again, that was a very <laughs> that was a very um, moving position that I had. And again, I didn't realize everything that Lifestream had to offer, um, and I learned a lot in that in that role as well. When I saw that this position became available. I kind of felt like it was a, a good fit for me, and I have a vast um, range of experience, but it kind of all meshes together, and um, you know, I was just really excited to, to hop on board and mm. kind of put everything that I've learned in the past, too, with all the resources that I've learned about and mm. um, just my you know, personal experience as well, and you know, put it to the test and give back to the community that you know, shaped me to who I am, so I'm very excited to be here. Oh, well, thank, you. thank you. We're very lucky to have you. Mm. Um, I think everything that you did in life kind of prepared you for this position and you have some good resources and I, I, you know, I think this is the perfect job and you are the perfect person for it. So and after you've been you. here for a while, we could really use a good president. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No, I'm not knocking the one to ten. No, 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 no. Just saying. <laughs> agenda for today uh, that uh, there are two members who are not here. Paul left because of health issues and uh, Jerry Bergeron, I think he is in Florida I at this is. time. Mm -hmm. And so um, we shall see. He could have yeah. come back. He could have come back. <laughs> yeah. It's the time of the snow. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Time of the lovely weather. Um, does, do, 
Does anyone on the board have any questions or information that they'd like to share? No. I no. Just to I say welcome. Just, welcome. Yes. Thank, yeah. you. Welcome welcome yes. Yes. Thank you. Welcome to Krishna. Thank you. Welcome to Krishna. Thank you. Um, I would like myself to see the um, meals come back. I would, I would really would like to see that. Yeah. You know, was this continue with the virus? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah, that was the, yeah. We used to have a lot of people. Oh, yeah. we did. We, we did. A lot of people in. You have to enlighten me. How does that work? Do they do they pay a small fee? Uh, yes, I think what two dollars. Two dollars. Two dollars for a meal. Um, right now, nice. um, all of the people that did come <clears throat> here, the meals are delivered to their home, and then after a month or so, they receive a bill. But it's a donation. If they cannot afford the two dollars per meal, they don't pay mm -hmm. the meal. Mm -hmm. And um, the good part about it is, even if they don't like the meal, it always contains some bread, some milk, mm -hmm. and a piece of fruit. Mm -hmm. So, say you really do not like um, the food. Let's say it's meatloaf with potatoes. You might eat the potatoes, mm -hmm. toss the meatloaf, but at least you have something there. They also have emergency meals that um, they. Uh, can be frozen and kept in their refrigerator. So on a day like yesterday, yeah, they, they have something. Have meals. Um, I, I would mention too. Um, back in my coastline days, we always would tell families too. It's a safety check. Um, yeah, having the meals delivered, and that might yeah, be the only is. face that you know an elder may see if they're living mm -hmm. alone. So that was always a good mm -hmm. thing to keep in yeah. mind. I agree with you. So that gives yeah. people the meals a chance to get out. Mm -hmm. To come Certainly and socialize, mm -hmm. and it was a big deal. Mm -hmm. yeah. The meals that they receive now are prepared by Coastline? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, well, the Coastline has a provider, and um, it comes mm -hmm. actually to our kitchen, and the ladies there put it all together, get oh. it all sealed up, mm -hmm. and then drivers come to our kitchen and pick up what they need to get and bring it out there. Mm -hmm. um, before, when we had full-time transportation, it was easy to bring people in. Right. Uh, we had a lot of veterans that would come in, yes. they would sit and talk, yes. and then they would um, have something to eat. We had some veterans who would come in, not eat, but you know, sit and talk, socialize. and they would still go home, socialize. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that was because we had the transportation. Um, that's something we're going to have to think about in the future. The so we have no transportation? We, our transportation right now is pretty, um, let, let's say you needed a ride to the doctors and mm -hmm. you left us know a week ahead of time, mm -hmm. um, we would provide you, the driver would come in to provide you for that ride. We do not have, like, we don't have people that are hired, in my opinion, I'm not sure, we do not have um, people that are hired, like, okay, this is our driver and he's hired from 8 to 12 for this week, and this is another driver, he's hired from 8 to 12, we don't have that anymore. We don't have that anymore? No. Not with budget cuts. I was say yeah. good funds. Budget cuts. It all kind of stopped with COVID. It kind mm -hmm. of stopped then. And what was happening is our drivers, if they were taking somebody, they could only take one person at a time on the bus. Uh, Unless, like, let's say you were going to the doctors. Yeah. Deb could go with you. But, but I couldn't go even if we were going to the same doctor. You know? right, and, right. Yeah, now, and, why is that? Co when COVID, that's when COVID, oh, COVID. Okay. 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 And then after, um, after COVID kind of stopped, we still were very cautious about um, transportation. Are we going to address all that after COVID care soon? Yeah, I think so. I think, I think, think so, should. yeah. In time. Yeah. In time. I think, I think so, we yeah. should. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And the other, the other thing, too, was um, we had talked about the council being open, like with storms and things like that. Mm -hmm. That our seniors could come in mm -hmm. and have the facility here. Yeah. That hasn't happened. Well, you were here yesterday, correct? Yes. yes. Uh, uh, Lauren was here, and so was our custodian. Yes. So, as an essential worker, in case someone did need to come in, yes. we were closed yes. for all programs and classes. Yeah. Um, but I was here, and Gary was here. here. Yes. Yeah. So, I'm surprised because usually if town hall is closed, so when we got closed. we did get a call that town hall was closing. We did come in. I believe it was around like twelve thirty or so that we got the okay to you know head out. Uh -huh. But we were here in the morning. Oh, yeah. So the way that I when I spoke with Mr. Kelly just in preparation of the storm, 
yeah. that him and I kind of came to the agreement that when the schools are closed, closed. we would be closed for you know any of the classes Program. or the programs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would be here, and um, Gary, the custodian, he would be here as well. Mm -hmm. But when the town hall closes, yes, we're closed as well. Yes, you know, even for uh, like administration and mm -hmm. custodial. Mm -hmm. But I assume that if some seniors did come here because of a safety issue, you would end up staying. Oh yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I was, so, you know, still taking phone calls and right. So still, you know, maintaining the administration side of things. Maybe we should have something put in the newsletters. Yeah. So the residents would be aware of this. Mm -hmm. I'm actually working on March, so that's something I could put in. Good, good. That would be good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay. May I have a motion? Uh, what time is it? Oh, I'm lost. Yeah. Yeah. What time is it? What time is it? 10 10. 10 10. 10 10. 10 10. May I have a motion? to uh, close this meeting. Okay, Dan. And a second. Second. Okay, Deb. 